Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are now in chapter five of the book of Proverbs. Now, in chapter five, uh, as we continue, I think you're beginning to get the the uh, the the style of writing by Solomon. He he keeps addressing the audience as my son. And remember, when he talks about son, it's specifically the, the male child. And uh, it is in an engagement, I think, uh, that we could see as an elderly person, uh, a wise old man in this case, uh, speaking to the youth of the day. And in so doing, giving them advice as how to conduct their lives. Right? So that's uh, something which we need to pay attention to with regards to the style of the writing. As we begin, he says, pay attention to my wisdom and then lend your ear to my understanding. I think you should be able to see that this is an A and a B. Uh, wisdom compared with understanding, and we have seen both words being interchangeable, including the word knowledge. So let's break this down. The first one, it's an imperative. Uh, it says, give attention and pay attention. It's, it's important. It's a picture of, um, of uh, well, le leaning your ear, leaning the ear. The second one, is also equally the same. It says to uh, extend the ear. It is also to, I guess, stretch down, bend down, bend down the ear. So basically, attention is very much about the ear because it's all about listening, remember? It's like here. So to hear, it's always about the ear, and the Hebrew language is very, uh, is, is very focused on speech, right? And somebody would say something, and the audience is always encouraged to listen and listen very carefully. And by listening carefully in a more poetic style, it is a, a description of the ear. Lean the ear, bend down the ear. Now, you notice he addresses it as my wisdom and my understanding. Uh, this is hokma, And the word understanding here is about uh, intelligence. Intelligence. So wisdom and intelligence are interchangeable because wisdom is knowledge. Wisdom is knowing things, knowing things about life, having deeper discernment of how life is supposed to be. So there is a, a, a relationship between wisdom, understanding or intelligence and knowledge. And so this is Solomon's wisdom and Solomon's intelligence. So the focus here is to pay attention. Now understand this, what belongs to Solomon, and we talk about Solomon's uh, wisdom and understanding, he gets it from God because it is based on his words that he has learned to live that through and, and learn more about God through his words. And so wisdom here is not uh, what we call uh, secular wisdom. You know, when you've got lots of experiences in secular life. It's got nothing to do with that. It is, has to do with what God tells him to do as commandments to Israel. He has uh, obeyed, he has learned, he has observed, he has seen, and that becomes his wisdom. And the purpose of paying attention is so that you may preserve discretion and that your lips may keep knowledge. And so, again, this is another A and a B. So it talks about one, preserve. Preserve means to guard. 
to guard um, to guard discretion. I think uh, other words would be things that you the things that you plan, things that you um, uh, how should you say your thoughts, and then that your lips. The word lips here. Uh, literally means uh, your speech. Your speech may watch over. I think this word here is to watch over. And understand this knowledge. Knowledge comes from... Uh, the, the, the idea of, um, how should you say, um, it, it is something that you experience, all right? And so the reason why this is an A and a B is talking about guarding, right? Uh, watching over. Now notice, I'm focusing on the Verbs, because that is the focus in Hebrew. It is not the nouns that is important. It is the verbs that's important. And so you know what you're guarding. You know what you're paying attention to. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Now, these are also an A and a B. So you notice this, right? So first of all, it talks about the lips of an immoral woman. Her is, is with regards to immoral woman. Her mouth. And so lips and mouth are also interlinked. Then you see this drip honey, smoother oil. And so let's take a look at the Hebrew word so that we can have a, a better and clearer understanding. The word honey uh, literally means honey, well, from the honeycomb. And this word here is to drip, and I think this would be correct, uh, to drip, and it drops down from the honeycomb. The other word is oil. Oil is the fatness, right? the fatness. And usually when it talks about oil, this would be the fat, it would be grease, it would be olive base, right? Not so much animal base. Uh, and the word smoother, uh, smoother really talks about, I guess you could say that it is uh Perhaps you could say flattering. Uh, we could actually use the word flattering. It is smooth. It is regarding the tongue. Regarding flattering. And so the, the illustration, it's all about the illustration. And so one is smooth oil. The other one is dripping honey. Right, these are all illustration of what? Of the lips of the immoral woman, of the mouth of the immoral woman. And so now let us take a look at the immoral woman. It is translated as immoral woman. But the word here is called uh, Zara. Zara actually means a strange woman, right? A strange woman. And usually this is with reference to people who has turned aside from God. And so this would be to understand the character of, well, in this case, you find that the immoral woman uh, is a contrast of wisdom. And so the immoral woman will be, I would say, um, one who turns away 
from God. And it is personified as a woman. And so we call her, okay, the bad woman. And so who is the good woman? Wisdom. Understanding. That's a good woman. The bad woman is one who takes people away from the path of God. And the description of the character of this woman is that it is she's smooth. She's attractive. Uh, she, um, she is sweet. Sweeter than the honey. Smoother than the oil. But, see, there's always a but here. The end, her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as two-edged sword. This is the character. I think we can, yeah, let's do verse by verse. The end here means the, the, the end part. The end part always talks about the end of a journey, right? The end, the consequence would be a good word to use. She is bitter. Now, bitterness is contrasted to honey that is sweet. All right, and bitter means it's not sweet. It is not pleasant, and wormwood is a kind of bitter wood. So it is a contrast to what honey is. She looks like honey. She seems to taste like dripping honey from the honeycomb. The, 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 the words that come out of her mouth is smoother than oil. But the end of it, the end of it, if you had taken it, she is actually not sweet at all. She's in fact bitter than the bit, most bitter wood. It is sharper. Uh, I think you'll find that this is sharp, really sharp as a double-edged sword. And it cuts, right? It cuts both ways. This is the consequence of the bad woman is a consequence of turning away from God. And furthermore, her feet go down to death, her steps lay hold of hell. Now, I don't like these, some of these words, so let me just break this down. Her feet. Now, in this case, both, right, both feet descends that is what it means by go down and then this one is death death means uh, the end of living all right the next one is her steps the word steps here really means uh, well I guess steps is good uh, her pace right the 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 the, the the way that she walks, right? Uh, and what happens is this one here, it talks about lay hold. The word lay hold here is, it would, it would grasp of Sheol. And this is another A and a B. Now, as, as you can see, the destination is death, basically. So the idea you could see is this. In, say, Psalms chapter 1, if you turn away from God, the end is death. Actually, this is really teaching the Torah, but in a very poetic way, right? In a very poetic way. Let's look at one more verse. Lest you ponder her path of life, her ways are unstable and you do not know them. So verse 6, the idea of lest is that you beware. Right? Beware. Beware. Uh, and, and this word ponder. The word ponder here really is to to check, uh, to weigh, right? To weigh, to keep in balance. So if you weigh, 
the 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 aura aura would be the the well you can say that the the pathway the pathway of life and so if you weigh the pathway of life you would see that her ways what is her ways that is the bad woman her ways would be her course this would be her track and you notice these are all words that we've always seen before and they are all synonyms her track is unstable and the word unstable here is about uh well i guess you could say that is wavering it is you know it is not constant it is vibrating it can be left it could be right it could be up or it could be down so it is moving it's a moving target and so the the uh, solomon says you actually do not know you have no knowledge of what this is which tells us this uh this is also an a and a b and it says that the way of the evil woman is not known to the man and so the man thinks that well it sounds good it tastes good or uh, smoother than oil but the 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 wise man solomon is saying look all of these things when you turn away from god it may be attractive but the consequence you really can't tell and i'm telling you now it is death it is unstable you will not be able to walk the path properly verse 7 therefore hear me now my children so this is now in the plural form of sons so hear about listening right in the first verse it is by leaning your ear so it is always related to pay attention hear listen to me now uh, do not depart from the words of my mouth and so the idea here is words of my mouth is the speech the advice the counsel and so this is to hear hear the words of solomon and it says do not depart so verse 7 it says depart means to turn aside now you know what turn aside means right so you're walking and turning aside is to walk away that's what it means remove your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house see these are all very uh poetic language right her her house this is the evil woman and that would be one who turns away from god so remove your way from her do not go near the door and we touched on this yesterday at the towards the end part of chapter 4 that the whole idea of wisdom to the young man is don't say that you can handle you are not to walk on her path don't go near her and don't even go into the house don't tempt yourself don't let yourself be tempted and that's basically the wise words of solomon lest you give your honor to others your years to the cruel now what does this mean is this that if you go near the door of 
those people who turn away, you are giving your splendor, your majesty, your vigor. I think vigor is good. Not as a young man, you're giving your youth. You're giving your youth uh, to other people. And, and, and I think when you say others, it means that you should actually have your youth and you give it to God. You're not supposed to give it to others where it is of no worth. And if that's the case, then your years would be like giving to the cruel, means the terrible. And so this is about the consequence again. If you actually go near the door and you go and you go near her, which is the evil woman, right? Right now it's the evil woman. You have a consequence because your youth and your vigor will be given to her. Your years will be to her. She's the cruel one. Lest aliens filled with your wealth, your labors go to the house of a foreigner. So understand this. The word here that is in play is aliens and foreigner. The word aliens in uh, verse 10 is strange. Stranger. The ones who have walked away from God, right? The second word here, foreigner, uh, is someone who, well, I guess you could say an alien, but it's also a pagan, right? One who worships other gods. I think that would be a way to explain it. So let aliens be filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of a foreigner means whatever accumulated that you have, it is going away to strange gods. I think you could use that. To strange people. Uh, and you're going to lose what you have to others. And then you would mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. The words here is that when it comes to the point when you see what you have go away to other people, and then you will, you will groan. The word mourn is groan. As if you have actually lost things and now you are, you are, you are aware of it. Uh, the word Last means the end part. And it could be the end part of your life. You know, when your flesh and your body are consumed. Uh, the word consumed here would be failing. And thereby, this is an A and a B. And that you should understand that this will happen at the end of life. You may think that it is fun now, but eventually you would realize and it will be too late. Verse 12, and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised correction. Now again, very clearly you could see, right? Instruction, correction. Hated, despised. I, my heart. Immediately, you can now see an A and a B. And so at that point in time, at the late stage of life, at late stage of life, you will now say how I hate. You know, the, the word hate is turn away. Instructions here would be uh, disciplining. And we've seen that yesterday. My heart, my mind, my choices have despised. And the word despise um, really means to, to spurn, to reject. Right? To reject. 
the word correction here is another word for rebuke, right? Or reproof. Means scolding, basically. And so at the end times, you would look back in your life saying that you have done wrong. What wrong have you done? You have turned away correction. When you could be corrected as a young man, you did not. So when you are old, you will live to regret. And you will say that, wow, I shouldn't have turned away people who dis disciplined me or rebuked me. Uh, you would say that I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ears to those who instructed me. Now you can see another A and B, right? my teachers, those who instructed me. And then it says, have not obeyed the voice, inclined my ear. So ear is always related to voice. So listen to this. Verse 13 says, I have not heard. So obey the voice means heard the sound of my teachers. My teachers here would be uh, more. So this is one word you can learn. More comes from the word yara, which means to point. And so the person who points is called the teacher, the more. And, and understand, the word Torah comes from the word Yara. And that tells us that God's Torah is what God is pointing us to, giving us a sense of direction, His instruction to how we ought to live. And so when you read this word, the voice of my teachers, my more, would be the one who points me to the right path. And that would be the Torah of God. I have not extend, lean my ear to those uh, who instructed me. And you know the word is uh, from, from the word Lamad, right? Which tells us there are two words here, right? The normal word is to learn. The intensive word is to teach. So those who teach me are also teachers. And so here is a regret of not listening to sound teaching. And what is sound teaching? The Torah. Basically that. And I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. And this is interesting. I was on the verge of total ruin, meaning you are very close to total ra. Things that is disagreeable. And so ruin is right because in, the, in your eyes, in my eyes, it says I, right? In my eyes, I was very near, you know, very near. Heaven yet, right? Very near into evil, but not yet. As I was in the midst of the assembly and congregation. Now, this assembly and congregation uh, would also, it would actually mean that they are in the midst of the, the, the right. But I was standing in the right, almost falling out of the congregation. That's basically how this is saying. That at the end of his days, I'm always almost at ruin, right? Almost at ruin. Now let's look at verse 15. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Now let's break it down into the Hebrew first. The first word, 
I don't think there's any magic. It's, it's to drink, right? It's to drink. Drink means to put it in your mouth, to drink, drink, drink water, basically, right? Drink mayim. Bring, drink your mayim from your own cistern. The word cistern here uh, and well, they come from the same word, right? It will mean uh, uh, a hole, a well, a pit. And this means that it is a hole that keeps water. Drink running water from your own well. Now, running water is a, a, a different word. Running water means flowing. And this is flowing water. Uh, and it says from your own well actually does not mean is from your own well. Uh, it really means from the... from. Well, I guess you can say from your own well, but it's better known as from the midst of your well. And so let me explain this to you. This is an A and a B, very definitely, because we're talking about the same idea. You have a place where you keep water, right? Both have water. When you drink, you drink from the hole that is keeping your water and you should also be drinking running water from your own well. Now understand, a well in itself has water coming into the bottom of the hole. That's what it means, right? That's what it means. And so if you imagine a well and then there's a hole and then water level is here and in this water level, it is flowing, right? It is flowing. So the idea is drink from your own well. Drink from what you know, right? Drink from what you know. Uh, and then should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets? Now let's look at what it means. Fountains. The word fountains is uh, a spring, right? The word disperse literally means to, I guess, to scatter. To scatter the water that's flowing right across. That's basically what it means. Uh, streams. This is I would say this is channels. Channels of water. Now, this word here doesn't really mean street. This word here really means an open space or a plaza. And so this is an A and a B. Do not, no, should your water be spreaded? out right this is a picture of water spread it out and that means that um it, it's it's an idea of losing water right uh should your water be all out there and you're drinking from everywhere else or should you be drinking from one single location so this is a picture of of uh of where you would take your water and water is about life and uh, you need to understand in the Hebrew context, water is about life. And this is about the life of my son or my children in this case. And that you shouldn't be learning from things that is out there, which is what they call the evil woman. You should be learning from the good woman that you already have in the midst of your congregation. Uh, and that would be the Torah of God. Let them only... Be, uh, let them be only your own. Verse 17. Only your own and not for strangers with you. 
understand strangers uh, in this case it's also the the people who turn aside and so the strangers is the evil woman right the picture of those who are teaching people to turn away from god and so let your water be for yourself not for the strangers those who turn aside and so this is really to tell that the the life giving water is for your own self not for those who have turned away right verse 18 let your springs be blessed rejoice with the wife of your youth now understand this your fountain uh in verse 18 will be your spring your spring uh be a blessing right a blessing means something that's good and then you rejoice the word rejoice samat is to be glad right to be glad with the wife now this word wife uh, understand this in the ancient days it would be the woman and so maybe for this purpose we are all talking about woman just look at woman of your youth youth means your early life now remember this is the consequence of end of life where you live to regret oh i should have listened to instruction and so now looking back at your early life as we're talking to my son or my sons this is the early life that you need to learn that your fountain should be a blessing right with the woman of your youth and this is important the woman of your youth is another personification just like wisdom hokma right hokma you would see this as torah that the law of god is the woman of your youth you have been taught that from young so this means that it is taught from young and so the hebrew way of life is to teach your sons exactly how to walk and how to walk is not about social in, in intelligence uh but very much god's torah and that would give the young child wisdom as he grows up and look at the poetic way of expression as a loving deer this is a female female deer you know doe a deer a female deer and a graceful doe uh now this this word here uh doe is actually a female goat now in in the hebrew they they, they love to use the word the deer the goat the sheep and and in this particular case they are all females right females and so the word here let her breast satisfy you at all times always be enraptured with her love right it's always about this woman right this woman is known as a loving female deer a graceful female goat uh, her breasts satisfy and now the word satisfy here uh is about saturated satisfy full by drinking and so we're talking about breastfeeding here and so the young boy or young child is drinking milk from her breasts at all times and these would be the loving deer the graceful doe feeding milk to the youth all the time and and always be 
enraptured. Now, this is this word enraptured uh, means uh, and always be, I guess you can use the word be, be captivated, I think intoxicated maybe. Intoxicated would be a good word, right? Intoxicated in her love. And, and so all of these is describing the woman of your youth. And this is really uh, being fed by the Torah of God. Right? This, this is really very much what it means. Verse 20. For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress. Now, this is a contrast to this one here, right? Contrast. This is the good woman and this is the bad woman. So why should you, my son, be enraptured? So understand the word enraptured is intoxicated. By a strange woman means one who stray away. And woman uh, means an immoral woman, right? A woman who strays away. And then be in the embrace, uh, be, be hugged, right? Maybe you can use the word be hugged. In the arms of... Now, the word here is not quite arms, right? Maybe you should use the word bosom. In the bosom of a seductress. And the word seductress means an alien, a foreigner, or a pagan who leads you to worship other gods. And so this is the question, right? That um, Solomon is asking, shouldn't you be intoxicated and gross and thralled in the arms of the woman of your early life, drinking the milk from her? Rather be intoxicated by a woman who goes away from God, be hugged in the bosom of a woman who, who worships other gods. That's the contrast as you have in 19 and 20. Verse 21, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. Right here, you would see God's way, right? And, and so for the ways of man, now understand this. Let's look at this. The ways of man, uh, the derech, the, the journey, the journeys of man, of a human, you can use that word. It says before the eyes, uh, this would be in front, right? This would be in front, in front of the eyes of Jehovah. This really means God is actually looking at your path, my sons, and he, uh, he ponders over all his paths. Now understand, the word paths here would be his tracks. Where he walks. Right? And the word ponders is weigh, balance. And so now you see an A and a B. When God looks at 
how a man walks, God will judge. Right? God will judge. Verse 22. His own iniquities entrap the wicked, and he is caught in the courts of his sin. This word, uh, avon, iniquities is avon. Avon really means uh, guilt. The word entrap is to intoxicate. And it will intoxicate, well, let's see, the word entrap, oh, sorry, it, it, it literally means to capture. To capture who? To capture the guilty, right? The one who walks away from God. That is the wicked man. And he, he is who? He is actually referring to the man, right? The man is also, uh, in this case, is seized. In the court. Now the word, cord here it would be the rope it is a picture right an imagery the rope of his sin this hatat so understand sin means what sin and iniquities are synonyms right so let me just mark this down iniquities and sin is a synonym and trap and caught is synonyms, which means that this is really an A and a B. And so sin is represented by courts, mainly because sin is missing the mark. And, and, and basically, if the mark is here, and if you shoot an arrow, and it lands right here. So what they do is that they would use a rope, right? And this is a cord to measure how far you've missed, and that would be sin. Okay, that's a very interesting play of words here, all right? And so it says, This man as he walks before God, and if he's not careful, he would be caught. Very important. He would be caught in, the, in, in wickedness. He'll be caught in his own sin. And he shall die for lack of instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. So let me just break this down and then we will come to an end. He shall die. And the word die is come to an end of life, right? End of life. The word lack, uh, I guess you could say that um, he would die for, for, no, for not having, right? Not having discipline. And his old life. He's looking back and then, you know, he's talking about, you know, once you come to an end of your life, you realize, and all this is his regret. And in the multitude, not greatness, right? In the multitude of his foolishness. Foolishness. Now understand, the idea of foolishness is not stupidity. Foolishness is about uh, going away or rejecting God or God's word, right? And then he shall go astray. 
this is a very uh, th this this word here uh, is is how should you say um, he will well a stray is also okay the the it gives us a, an understanding of error right and of error and so what it means is if this is the right path and if you were to go astray, and that is what it means by go astray. And so you have left the right path. You have not taken instruction. So discipline, if you look at this word, discipline, is to bring you back to the right road. And so the whole concept in these verses is about the regret. So when you come to the end of your life and you look back and you wish you had, that would be a bit too late. Because God has been looking and he's been weighing and he is going to judge and you cannot escape because you will die for not listening to instruction. And you will die in the multitude of your foolishness when you reject God by going away from God. And so the whole of chapter 4 is a grievous warning. The good woman, remember the good woman. Keep the, your good woman in sight. Don't follow the strange woman, the bad woman who lead you away. And, and that would be the... the, the the core teaching of chapter 5.